Welcome back. It's 7 a.m. on day three, and I'm very curious to see what Grace thinks about this latest turn of events. Something tells me she's not going to be too thrilled about it. I can't believe what happened last night. Well, it was a long time coming. Oh, God. Well, that's about what I expected. I really don't want to do that. Yeah, God forbid you talk over this relationship stuff or anything. That would just make it too easy, I guess. I guess this is the bloodline stuff. Look at all these genealogy charts. It's about the bloodline. I wonder where he found it. That's a good question. This bloodline concept keeps cropping up. I wonder if Sydney knows anything about it. And there are keys on the table. It's the keys to the Harley. Yep, you bet. So I guess it's uh, Grace's turn to go out and about today. Well, I guess she's earned that, right? However... We want to do some stuff before that. And I actually think I missed um, an article for the previous verse. Okay, that is just nonsense. I know that's there. Oh, duality, I guess, not dualism. Okay, that's the one. Because I was missing a point, that's why uh, <laughs> I knew I missed that. Apparently I skipped over this article, it was actually relevant to the previous verse, but I'll read it now, just for completeness sake. The Gnostic believe in the separation of good and evil, heaven and earth, carnate and incarnate. Manichian is... <laughs> Manichian... I, I have no idea. <laughs> first expostulated the concept that all material things were, by definition, evil, including everything on Earth and every human being. The king of the material realm is Rex Mundi, associated with the Christian devil. In contrast, heaven, the incarnate realm, is sinless and holy. Man's soul is incarnate, but is trapped in the mortal world of sin. It is man's task to renounce the material world and his own flesh in order to gain heaven. From this belief uh, sprang Cathar of Catharism, another major Gnostic heresy, at least according to the Pope. A similar concept of duality was later incorporated by the Rosicrucians. The symbol of duality is a hexagram fashioned from two superimposed triangles, which represent the dual nature of soul and flesh. Okay, that sounds familiar. Is there anything about bloodlines in, the, in Sydney? Hmm, there seems to be something. The sacred bloodline of the pharaohs. In ancient Egypt, the bloodline of the pharaohs was ma manipulated in each successive generation by a powerful sect of priests. The blood of the pharaohs was considered divine due to his calculated genetic cross-matching. In their efforts, the priests used a variety of methods to determine the proper marriages, including magical portents and divination, astrological progressions, and even a ki kind of ritual that would now be considered a form of chemical testing. The bloodline was intermarried frequently, brother to sister, because we all know that's a good idea, um, to double its divine potency. The priests were trying to create a living Osiris, a god on earth, by perfecting the lineage of their pharaohs. Who do they think they are, the Bene Gesserit? The details of this process were one of the highest secrets of e Egypt and have been lost to the sands of time. Okay. You know, that sounds a lot like... Uh, what uh, Montreux was talking about with breeding grapes. Okay, um, well, I guess since we're with Grace again, we should continue with Le Serpent Rouge. And the next verse is Leo. 
This riddle is fascinating. Oh, I meant this icon. I visit the tomb of the celebrated painter Poussin and, like the shepherds, puzzle at the enigma of the tomb. My brain pounds, the light burns my eyes. It is all too mixed up to tell. Teniers, too, has dipped his brush in the earth, and his at the innermost places of the queen. Here is the sign that Teniers has given in his innocent recluse. Surely, there is a path between the two. Hmm, so, if we're talking about paintings, Poussin and Teniers, both apparently um, painted parts of this area. Poussin, of course, uh, painted the tomb, which we already knew. Teniers, though, I don't think we know exactly. The innermost places of the queen. I guess that we'll be talking about the circle again. And the center of the circle was L'Hermitage. Does Teniers perhaps have a painting at that area? Hmm. Those two paintings are mentioned again. I really need to get a hold of them. Hmm. Is there an art gallery nearby? I don't think so. In any case, it mentions shepherds in capital letters, and you know what that means. It means that I'm gonna look that up. And that takes us to Arcadia, for some reason. No, not the one from The Longest Journey. Arcadia is a mythological place of pastoral serenity and beauty, shepherds and nymphs. It is a fictional place, popular in the 16th century, though its name may come from a pastoral area of Greece called Arcadia. A standard feature of Arcadian scenes is a bubbling stream emerging from the ground. This underground stream represents hidden knowledge such as the Pythagorean, Gnostic, Kabbalistic and Hermetic traditions. Arcadia itself represents the naive state of man, blissful but ignorant, without this knowledge. As the stream's bubbling emergence shows, forbidden knowledge always sooner or later comes to light. These concepts are somewhat related to the Tree of Knowledge and the Garden of Eden. On the other hand, esoterists might argue that the true Eden represented by Arcadia can only come about once the stream surfaces, as it does in the paintings, and is allowed to flow freely i.e. once the hidden knowledge or secret becomes known. Hmm. Okay, I wonder how that relates to, uh... the riddle. And if, indeed, this is the link that I was talking about with shepherds. What we need to do, however, is get those paintings. And if you have a good memory, you might remember that we have, in fact, seen them before in postcard form at the museum. So that is where we can get them. Um, let's see if anything's happening in the dining room, as it so often does. And Lady Howard and Estelle are eating. Big surprise there. Wide awake and kicking. I guess that bridge game last night didn't run too late. Or whatever game it was they were playing. Since it certainly wasn't bridge. Good morning, Lady Howard, Estelle. My, aren't we perky today? Did you enjoy your bridge game last night? Yes, it was quite nice. Marvellous. Certainly better than mooning about, or dining with that abominable Wilkes, for that matter. Is that why we're so chipper this morning? Mm? Oh, no. You know what they say. A good night's rest can work wonders. Wait till you hit 40, darling. I guess uh, Lady Howard is picking up on the afterglow. No, it certainly wasn't Wilkes. Because that would have been even worse than uh, with Gabriel. Alright, let's go and fetch those paintings. Hopefully the museum is open this time. 
Grace hasn't actually been there yet. So last time we went here, there was a uh, thing on the door, but we couldn't go in. But this time it seems they are open. And this is where we noticed those paintings. Oh, it's David Teniers' The Temptation of St. Anthony. There are two Tenier postcards. That makes sense, since no one knows which St. Anthony Sonier was interested in. Maybe I should take them both. I guess we should. We need to figure out which one it is. For uh, 10 francs. That's a postcard of 10 years, St. Anthony and St. Paul. And finally, it's a postcard of Poussin's painting, Le Berger de Arcadie. Okay, um, I think that's all we're interested in. Mm -hmm. They've got some nice postcards of the town and valley. That postcard is just a scenic shot. It's not going to help me with the treasure map. And that's true of all of the others. Well, since Grace has never been in here before, I guess she can talk to the museum curator as well. Madame Girard, the museum lady. Perhaps she knows who left that envelope on the door. Uh, excuse me. Ah, uh, yes? Do you know anything about an envelope taped to your door last night? Pardon, an envelope? What kind of an envelope? A large manila envelope. I did not notice such a thing when I left last night. Perhaps Mademoiselle is thinking of a different door? Oh, yeah, that must be it. Thanks. Oh, I guess that rules that out. Let's uh, see. Of course, we've read all of this. Let's see if Grace have anything to s has anything to say about it. This side of the panels gives the history of the Long Dock. Yeah, they have a red, white, uh, a red, white, black, and white floor here as well. Sonier himself, intense looking, isn't he? Look at that book plate. It has a circle, just like the one I found on the map. And inside are two triangle shapes superimposed. One white, one black. I wonder if something like that will appear on my map. And that is, um, if you're paying attention, the um, hexagram described in the article on duality that we just read. So this is the symbol of duality inside the circle. And there's also a square round circle, although... So, who knows if that's going to end up on the map. It's an angel holding a devil in chains. Oh. Yeah, that's a glitch. <laughs> Get Gabriel's uh, discussion for that. It's one of Sonier's letters. I wish. Not only don't I speak French, his handwriting was atrocious. These are bills and work orders for the construction Sonier did. I'm sure there were lots of them. Undoubtedly. Cute guy. I'd love to see Gabriel in an outfit like that. The hell? These panels tell the Saunier story. Is that the same glitch here on this side? It's an angel. Yes. It's an angel. Okay. Looks like something from Ludwig's castles. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of reminiscent of that, isn't it? Adam digging. That's appropriate for this region. 
I suppose so. The important thing, though, is that we got the paintings. So let's head back to the hotel room and see what we can uh, make of them, together with the help of Sydney. Gabriel still sleeping? Oh, I guess he had a long night. Um, I wish I knew oh, which. Damn it. I did not want to use hints. I wanted to open the inventory. And indeed, what Grace said was that she wishes she knew which of the paintings was relevant. And indeed, maybe Sydney can help with that. But let's look at the paintings and think about them. I bought it at the museum. It's Poussin's Les Bergers d'Arcadie. That's Poussin's tomb, I guess, then? I should see if Sydney can do anything with it. Okay. To scan that, I'd have to get onto Sydney and do an add data. I am on Sydney, I just didn't go into the inventory for Mad Data. Okay, well, we'll look at the other paintings first. St. Anthony and St. Paul by David Tenier. Doesn't look like anything I know. I should see if Sydney can do anything with it. How about the other one? Oh, it's David Tenier's The Temptation of St. Anthony. I should see if Sydney can do anything with it. Okay, well, our course is clear. I'll scan the other two as well. Apparently they're reversed in the inventory, because that one is number two now. So this one will be number one. And I guess we'll um, see what we can make of that in the next video.